Okay, good afternoon everybody, um, and welcome to the uh, NSD at Cybos Roundtable, which has the title of Driving Infrastructure Changes. My name is Eddie Heaton, I am the Managing Editor of ISS Magazine. First duty this afternoon is to introduce our Knights of the Roundtable. Um, starting at the far end, uh, we have Mr. Bogdan Tataru, who's with uh, Computer Share Russia. Uh, then we have Philippe uh, Laurency of Euroclear. And then uh, Mark Bosque of Clearstream. Um, and then um, Mr. Uh, I think I'm right in saying, Mr. Oleg Perestenko of the Bank of Russia. Uh, Mr. Eddie uh, Stalin, of course, who is the C CEO of NSD. Uh, and next to me, we have Christian Pinetz of uh, OEKB. Um, so, welcome to you all. Uh, I'd like to start off uh, by asking. Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Eddie Astani, uh, just to give us a general um, overview um, how he thinks that the NSD now fits into the global post-trading industry and what have been the main developments in Russia uh, since the beginning of the year. <coughs> Eddie Astani. Thank you, Eddie, for interesting question. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I can say that uh, within the last two years, the Russian financial infrastructure got a lot of changes. Especially, uh, I'm talking about the legislation and technologies. Uh, by the end of last year, our parliament uh, accepted new uh, amendments in our tax code and disclosure, so we have solved one of the big problems concerning investment of international community into the Russian securities market and so after that uh, it was one of the general conditions for the open and link with ICSDs, Clearstream Europe here, uh, giving access of international community to the corporate bonds, municipal bonds and assets. And uh, after that it was the next stage and uh, in July of, of this year, we have uh, got new amendments of our legislation concerning corporate protection reform. I mean e-proxy voting for annual meetings of shareholders. And uh, now we are in line to the implementation of technologies concerning e-proxy voting in our uh, value chain, I mean, uh, issues, registers, CSD, our clients, and clients of our clients, okay? I mean, final investors. It seems to me it take, take some time, it takes some time to implement final solutions, and we are going to finish in April 2015 to implement this technology, and after that, we expect that uh, new amendments in our legislation will take will will be implemented, I mean uh, changes concerning all types of core protections uh, for providing e voting. Uh, according to these amendments, uh, our issues, Russian issues, will be obliged to disclose corporate information in electronic form. I hope it will be stand I saw I saw 20, 20 or 22 standards and this information will be distributed and communicated or cascaded through CSD, local CSD, through NSD and after that uh, from bottom line, I mean final investors, they have chan they have uh, tool and uh, rights to vote in using e-voting technologies <coughs> and this information will be transferred to send via CSD to the, to the issues. Uh, we believe that by the end of next year we will finish implementation of the technology in our, in our IT platform and after that uh, I hope we will join to the uh, most developed CSD over the world which provide our protection services. <laughs> I, I saw Beatrice is smiling at <laughs> the beneficial order, or maybe some, some, some client of our, our company. 
And uh, I know that uh, there is strong demand for this for this service, and the Wolf from SEB, member of our international consulting uh, consulting uh, committee, uh, spoke a lot uh, during our meetings about this demand. And I hope that it will be the last obstacle on the way of international community you know, to the to the Russian financial market to get international standards, uh, world class services on, on the on the Russian market. Also we have another second key project in our pipeline, I mean uh, Center for Corporate Information, Golden Source. As you know we bought uh, this, the, the same name platform, uh, Golden Source last year and installed it installed it. And now we have a uh, common project with, with our regulator, Central Bank of Russia, uh, to implement some amendments in our legislation. According to this legislation, we will, we will be connected with issuers to collect this information, verify it, and distribute it on the uh, SDP messaging uh, format. And I hope that it will also will bring added value for the uh, international community, which I think to invest in, to, into the Russian financial market. Thank you very much indeed. Now, um, just carrying on from what you said about the um, the international challenges, I'd, I'd like to put a question to both um, Philippe Lancy of Euroclear and Mark Bosquet of Clearstream. Uh, just in general terms, uh, perhaps we um, uh, we'll start with you, um, uh, Philippe Lancy. How you know how do you, how are you finding working with the NSD on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, you know, and what have been the benefits and, and the challenges involved? I guess we, we work with NSD like we do work with any other uh, CSD in, in the market. So we've established the, the link with them. Uh, the account is operated uh, by VTB, uh, but the assets are held directly with, uh, with NSD. And we said the support that we received from, from NSD has been uh, outstanding. Uh, that's new for them. Uh, I think uh, a few years ago there was no international clients. Um, Euroclear probably not the easiest customer to, to serve. We're very demanding. We're trying to push indeed towards the, the international standards. Uh, but I must say that NSD has been listening. Uh, as the authorities, the central bank, the Ministry of Finance, etc. to all of the points that we were raising as potential issues. Uh, and uh, they've been trying to respond to the to-dos uh, in order to meet the international standards. So if, indeed, if you, if you go back two years, as I mentioned, a lot has been achieved, uh, and that's to a very large extent thanks to the attitude of NSD. Thank you very much. Mark Ma Bosquet, what's your um, view on that? Yeah, I uh, confer very much what uh, Philippe is saying, and um, if you look back 24 months, everything that has happened is really Impressive because Eddie has given a short overview of a couple of changes, important ones that have taken place, but uh, he didn't mention about what the NSD itself has actually um, made over the, the last 24 months. If you look back, not that long ago, you had actually the NSD didn't really exist yet as such because we have integrated several clearing houses, uh, the local DCC, into the NSD. Then we have integrated the, the registers uh, back in 2013. Um, a lot of things have happened um, at the level of the NSD. They have implemented procedures to cope with their tax withholding responsibility. And all this, like Philippe said, on a very um, cooperative approach. We, we do open accounts with CSDs uh, around the world. Uh, one of the, the latest one implemented is Taiwan. Um, the case of Russia has been very interesting because the NSD has been listening uh, to us as to what extent uh, procedures need to be implemented in order uh, for the procedures to make sense for the international investor base. But it has also made a link to um, the various uh, authorities, including the central bank as a regulator, including the Ministry of Finance, uh, talking together. Uh, how we have to set up disclosure agreements, tax procedures, and so on and so on. So the, the collaborative approach of DNSD has really been uh, impressive and, and results, in my view, in a, in a very, very good link to the, the best possible international standards. Thank you very much indeed. Now, 
This time last year, almost exactly, I don't know if um, it was exactly a year ago, but uh, at Cybers last year in, uh, in Dubai, we had a, a signing ceremony between these two gentlemen on, on my left, uh, Mr. Um, uh, uh, Pinetz of the OEKB, of, of Austria of course, um, and, and, and Eddie Askanin signed a, 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 an agreement. Now, um, perhaps you could tell me one year on, uh, what, what's, um, um, what are the um, developments, um, what, were the, what have been the benefits and the, and the, and the challenges and were your expectations met? First of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, as Mark and old Philip already said, I think uh, Eddie the NSD achieved such a uh, lot of things in parallel, and that's really amazing for me to see them coming into life. I think it's a very important step for us to, 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 to have the mm -hmm. account open and operated like it is now. So we are able, for example, to, to, to trade with equities, Russian equities and Russian rubles, as well in the rest store, and it works pretty well for us. So thanks a lot for that. Um, what we're seeing from, from, from the Austin point of view, I think there's a huge demand for Russian securities in the Austin market due to the historical uh, background that we have. You know, Austin was always the gateway to the Central East European countries, so we uh, were approached not just from the Austin clients, but also from the national clients to use us for, as a gateway to the Russian market. What they have achieved, and then Mark and, and, and uh, Philip already stated, I think it's the, uh, the, to create a single CSD from the scratch. I think that's a very, very good, important step for us. So we don't have to, 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 to go back to all the 40 registers that were two years ago in the, in the local market. So that's a very important step for us. The other thing is, I think the change that we're seeing in the legal uh, area, especially for corporate actions that we have. For example, the, uh, the first <coughs> January this year comes into force as one of one of the important legislation that we have seen. So now we are able to operate uh, Russian equities, so we can use Russian equities uh, in, the, in the market. That was one important thing, and the other one is ongoing. You know, you also stated the proxy voting. You know, the, the, the huge international client wants to uh, make use of their rights, of course, in the most efficient way. So we don't have to fill in a lot of documents, protocols, etc. So your access. So that it's really, really appreciated, yeah. And what we're seeing, I think, there's more, of course, things to do in the, in the future. As we already stated, the golden source, we would like to see to have to get the information for corporate action, dividend, beam, etc., in a as an international standard way, while SWIFT, for example. So that's the reason why we are currently using also a local operator to get uh, the information uh, out of the market. So if we can achieve that, <laughs> that would be great, great to see you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd now like to ask um, uh, Mr. Perestenko of Bank of Russia um, uh, a little bit about regulation. Perhaps you could tell us um, there has been a mega, mega regulator in Russia um, for over a year now. And um, have you seen um, the results that you expected to see? Well, thank you a lot. Uh, I'm not about all the central bank. I'm about the Bank of Russia payment system, first of all. Well, just uh, if possible, I'll try to maybe firstly uh, give you a few words concerning the payment system and then okay. uh, just I'll go back to maybe yeah. try to explain that's, what are the uh, results of our mega regulating activity. Okay. Well, first of all, <coughs> thank you for invitation. Uh, what I have to say that our payment system is safe, confident, stable and active despite of any circumstances in our well, let's go deeper. Uh, our payment system is a systemically important one, in playing key role payment nation monitoring and budgeted policy. Uh, it plays a uh, central part in settling payments by financial market participants, including most of the bank payments. NSD is our maybe most important client in this very view. Uh, our payment system must by law process free of charge all payments arising from federal, regional, municipal government budgets as well as extra budget funds. That's why our payment system is a multi-service one. Not only uh, handles a large value, but low value payment system, uh, payment payments as well. Uh, our payment system comprises the following payment services. Uh, urgent payment service. It's a bank and electronic speedy payments. It's our Russian RTGs with real-time payments finality and non-urgent uh, non Payment service, it's uh, two systems, uh, intra-regional and inter-regional electronic payments with the same day finality and backup payment system with non-similar activity paper-based. 
Last year, more than 1,300 millions, millions payments um, were made through the payment system. Total value of payments made through the system was equivalent 18, more than 18 Russia's GDP. Uh, the share of the Bank of uh, the Bank of Russia payment system in total volume of the national payment system was about 32 percent, and uh, total volume it's amount uh, more than 63 percent. And uh, average daily volume of the payment system in the Bank of Russia was about 5 million payments, and average uh, amount per transaction is about 900 of thousand rubles. Uh, what's new? What are the latest events in our system. This year uh, some amendments have been uh, adopted in our reg regulation. First of all, we extended our settlement window for two hours. We start at 7 a.m. Moscow time and close at 9 p.m. Uh, then we adopted a new message, uh, message format in our payment system which fully compatible with MT202 and uh, according to National Payment System Act we have an uh, option to hire a key service provider, I mean first of all SWIFT as a key service provider in order to support uh, our activity, activity of our payment system in parallel with our virtual private network. Well, in this year we do self-assessment it's speaking about international standards of, uh, in this area concerning the financial market infrastructures. According to National Payment System Act, we carried out self-assessment of the Bank of Russia payment system aimed to define compliance with CPSRS principles for financial market infrastructures. Uh, I think that uh, we can uh, share results of this self-assessment on our website till the end of this year. Now. Uh, the process of assessing uh, NSD as a payment system is in progress. I think we can uh, finalize uh, this uh, process till the end of this year. It's quite product productive for us. And last but not least, it's our common project with NSD. Since so the second quarter of this year, together with NSD, we have been implementing the project aimed to allow financial market infrastructures to finalize uh, the settlements via our TJ system and central bank money. First stage till the mid of the day 2015, we plan to implement DVP1 model, which allow participants in real time move to finalize their settlements and securities market and at the same time to mobilize additional liquidity for payments in our TGS. Next stage will be about TVP2. Uh, it's it will be about, uh, it will be according to participant demand now in the stage of focusing this work on the credit institutions that we will take part in project testing phase. That's in short, to speak about the payment system. Well, if we speak about mega regulation, it's just quite another pair of shoes. Because, you know, uh, the financial, uh, federal service financial market uh, it was a uh, government agency that was responsible for non-bank financial intermediaries. And now this area is uh, just more or less distributed among the Bank of Russia activity. We, you know, we uh, have new nine departments uh, concerning this very activity. And uh, what I can note in the following, that's the uh, different areas. First of all, it's the area of the pension funds. Uh, during the last year, amendments uh, to legislation and decision, in particular, the formation of the system that guarantees the rights of insured individuals have been made in this area. And the area of insurance market, the Bank of Russia has elaborated the specific requirements to rules and procedures and to terms of investment on uh, resources, capital, insurance results that will to raise the quality of insurance assets and the level of Bank of Russia control over these assets. Well, another market, the market of microfinancing. That's the area of the mega regulating additional one. Uh, in July this year, federal law on consumer credit 
at the Investage New Institution of Professional Credit was in Europe. Macrofinance organizations, credit, consumer cooperative societies, and pawn shops have been ascribed entirely to professional creditors. The area of rating agencies, that's the area of our activity too. The Bank of Russia has worked out a draft law that specific, specifies the major requirements for activities of the rating agencies and also the functions of the Bank of Russia that can be implemented with the framework of the authority to supervise the rating agencies agencies' activities. Corporate governance, another area. We drafted the code of corporate governance. It's now in, in case of, uh, in, the, in the stage of draft and in, in stage of discussion. And last but not least, the reform of bookkeeping and accounting of non-credit financial institutions. A huge work, not maybe very interesting for <laughs> all the participants, but it just it takes time, it takes resources, and so on. That's what's new from the Bank of Russia point of view when we merge with uh, the Russian uh, agencies. I would like to give some comments, additional comments. Uh, Bank of Russia recognizes NSD as the system systematically important uh, infrastructure. What does it mean? It means that it will be special regulation of NSD as the entity and infrastructure. Additional control over risk management procedures, financial stability situation, and others. At the same time, it means that our clients will get additional confirmation of reliability and stability of our company because we, <coughs> NSD, gets a state backup. So it seems to me it's very important information and message for international uh, for our community. I mean, local and international because. Because it means that we are under control and we are reliable, and we, in in any case, we will get uh, state support to provide all types of services. Because at current time, NSD not only sees we are also trade repository, systematically important important trade repository, payment system, systematically system, system, payment system. yes, payment system. Uh, cultural management services provider and uh, uh, corporate center of corporate information. Yeah. So five streams. Our profile is becoming bigger and more more diversified. Thank you. So talking about corporate actions, uh, our colleague right at the other end of the table there, uh, Bogdan Tatar of uh, Computer Share. Uh, perhaps you'd like to um, to talk about um, how corporate actions reform, um, uh, the establishing of a CSD in Russia was uh, obviously a tough time for registrars, uh, but they overcame that and managed to, to solve the issue. So how will corporate actions reform influence registrars' business model? Well, first of all, um, I remember that a few years ago, before CSD uh, came fully into working and functional, uh, the registry market was booming and thinking, looking at CSD as being, as being the big bad wolf. And actually it turned out not to be the big bad wolf. It's, uh, it's the, the, the normal and the uh, natural um, market uh, presence uh, and like any CSDs around the world. Uh, and what we had to do as, uh, as registrars, I'm, I'm lucky for being um, the representative of an international player, uh, we just need to, to uh, take the opportunities on the market and try to uh, work together and build the market. It's not just say that somebody is bad or not good, you just need to, to work and, and develop the market. And this is something that, that is happening uh, since then. Um, and from since we are covering not only the issuers but we have the shareholders as, as our clients, the new rules in the corp incorporate uh, uh, actions uh, are beneficial for both for the issuers and the and the shareholders. And yes, sometimes for the for the register, uh, it may mean a little bit of um, my, like losing a little bit from uh, from the income. Uh, but if you're smart enough, you can you can um, build your own services that can be like a, a, an added value to uh, to what 
the actual regulation is uh, is in place. Thank you. And how, how does this um, compare with your experience in other in other markets? Um, well, I may say that I, I just saw a report, my colleagues from Global Capital Markets in New York, they are building uh, every year um, a survey uh, covering 16 markets and talking about transparency and, and share, uh, voting rights and, and shareholder uh, voting. And uh, if anyone had any uh, doubt that Russia might lag behind, uh, I may say that Looking at the at the details and all the all the other countries, uh, Russia is very well advanced, and, and it's except for electronic voting, <coughs> which just Eddie mentioned that is going to be in place in, uh, by by April 2015. Uh, Russia is uh, is uh, is um, like the, the legislation now and the work that is in place and and all the working groups and everything shows that uh, it will be at the like very good level. Okay, thank you very much. Now I'd like to turn back to our uh, um, I ICSD um, panelists, um, and I've got a couple of questions for each of them. Um, what are the pressure points in the evolution of Russia's post-trading infrastructure? Uh, what are the priorities from your point of view? And also, more specifically, um, access to the bond markets is, is recognised as, as a success by all participants, but what do you expect from the equities launch, and, and what do you think are the main obstacles uh, to success? Perhaps, uh, Philippe Lancy, you'd like to start us off. Yes, the, the, the pressure points are the points that, you have, uh, that we've discussed uh, so far, is, is make sure that the things that remain to be done on, on the corporate action, on the electronic proxy voting, etc., are indeed materialized in the in the months to come, and the, the interests uh, for the Russian market is to is to prove that they have built a post trade infrastructure that is reliable, and that the foreign investors they will uh, not consider that there is a post trade infrastructure risk when they take the decision to to invest in, in Russia, be it on the fixed income side or, or on the equity side. And I think it's a it's a very important element that people might sometimes underestimate. Uh, people look at risks today uh, much more than in the past, but the market infrastructure risk has always been something that the people uh, were looking at. And so I would probably say that five years ago, uh, one of the reasons why there was not more investments in Russia was among other things because the infrastructure was not meeting the uh, international standards. Now, coming to, to your other questions, uh, indeed, we've seen quite a significant uh, inflow of, of money on, on the government debt uh, once we've entered the, the Russian market. So foreign, ho foreign holding moves from 3-4% to something around 20-25%. Um, and then the, the Ministry of Finance managed to even reduce its, uh, its borrowing level, so that was a, a good news for, for everybody. Uh, will that be replicated? Uh, it's a good question, given the current geopolitical situation, uh, it's very difficult to assess uh, one, when and what uh, things will, will happen and, and materialize. The uh, Russian market has dropped significantly, so the exchange has lost 40-50%, uh, the ruble has lost significantly against uh, the euro or the dollar. So you may probably think that at some stage, uh, the foreign investors, when things stabilize, will come back to the market. Uh, but that's a bit of a crystal ball. Okay. Marco Ske, what's, um, what's your take on that? Yeah, well, infrastructure is obviously important, and I think we are indeed all risk managers. <coughs> and the issue that really needs to be addressed, in my view, is the usage of the RPGS cash system. Because we do have a very good settlement system, the NSV runs from the morning to the evening, 7.30 7 p.m. local time. I think you are very strategically located between London, New York on, on one side and, and Beijing and Tokyo on the other side. Um, and the, the central bank has developed a very good cash system. Uh, we also have experience to work in nine different time zones. I yet wonder why the RTGS is not more used by the market participants. Um, and I would like to open that debate if, if the other panelists and the market thinks that it is an issue. And I think it is. Um, I think the Russian infrastructure 
economic level of future usage of the RTG system. Because today, market participants are very much using the uh, batch, batch system in the cash element, which obviously has, has a negative impact on, on, on liquidity. I don't know whether other participants and, and, and Philippe to start with experiences the same uh, feeling or I mean have, has the same experience on the fact that the RTG system is not being used and or whether the, the central bank sees uh, an evolution in that and, and how that can that can potentially be uh, be resolved. Thank you. Well, perhaps our uh, central banker would like to uh, respond to that. Yes, of course. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, from point to point. The first point concerning risk management. Uh, what's the important thing I have to stress? According to National Payment System Act, uh, systemically important payment system have to manage their risk in real time mode. Uh, NSD itself now is a systemically important payment system, not only a CSD. According to the law, they have to manage the risk in real-time mode. Now, we are, in, as I mentioned previously, in process of assessment how it was done and how it's doing now. And uh, I think just according to previously, uh, um, that what we have now just as a explanation or just as a uh, regulation of local regulation of uh, NSD we have serious support of the EU that that's it's done normally. but it's not at the final uh, conclusion of our assessment but in any case that's that's what they previously won well what about speaking our RTGS that's uh, it's for me uh, from year to year since 2007 when we uh, started our RTGS that's the time for any discussion why our clients uh, use normally batch system and not use our RTGS mode. Well, let's go to the figures, let's go to numerical information. That's what I need, that's what I have, sorry, just from 9 to 10 uh, a.m. Moscow time, we have about 60% of total uh, turnover of amount between Bank of Russia uh, in, in our RTGS, between the accounts of the, uh, our clients and uh, the account of the NSD. That means that the initial funding of the accounts with the CSD doing via RTGS. In the evening, as a result of the just settling of uh, instruments and so on, as a result of GDP activities, we can see the activities in our RTGS as a result of such uh, settlements. And during the day, we can see, if, if we speak about RTGS mode, a more or less prominent activity, it's about maybe 30-40%. Now, we are in the situation when we don't prohibit using batch system for large value payments. Because we understand that our main place in the financial market understand more or less clearly what are the pros and cons of each service in our payment system. And now, really, what we can see, that all the funding concerning the markets, what we can see, normally uses RTGS as a mode. In case of uh, using any maybe OTC market and other activities, we can see Batch as a um, well liquidity saving mechanism in order to offset multilateral offset of the payments into bank payments using our special mode for such other things. Well, just if we speak about some peculiarities, let's discuss it maybe just more or less precisely. Uh, but I, I'm afraid that there is some kind of stereotype in our discussion that the RTGS mode normally doesn't use, don't use, and just batch mode that's more or less preferable. I think it's not the case just for all the times during the day. That's maybe just let's uh, be more accurate than in this very area. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I have a question to Philippe, Mark, and Christian. Have the NSD is systematically, systematically important system or payment system? Does it mean that settlement with uh, commercial bank money while NSD is practically central bank money 
model it, or its, its formal question. I mean, uh, for your clients, it's, it's important to understand that a settlement is done only via RGS system, accounting RGS system, not commercial work. Is it, is it uh, make sense or not? I think it's, for me, at least, it's uh, not necessarily. I think the fact that you are systemically important means that basically you need to take all the procedures so that you, you don't disappear. You have mm -hmm. to be there tomorrow. And otherwise, it creates uh, dramatic consequences for, for, for the market. Uh, I think the, there are many CSDs that are not, uh, or ICSDs, if I take US Revenue Europe here, we are systemically important, but we are working in commercial bank money as well. I don't think it's linked to the uh, quality of money being central or being uh, commercial. It's more linked to the fact of how relevant are you and how impactful can you be if something goes wrong uh, for the market. I think the issue that the batch system creates for, for us uh, is the fact that within the same batch you cannot receive and use the money that you've received. So basically you create, you have to receive the money in one batch and then you need to be able to only pay in the next batch. And the problem is that there are five batches today, uh, but the first one is hardly used. The money comes in into the second, you can deliver into the third, and then after that, you basically block it. So that's that's the issue that, that we have today. Are you disagree? Hmm? I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> and the problem is also whether people have the confidence to be able to fund their accounts. So it doesn't matter whether it would work. They kind of say, well, because you may get caught in the batch room, you know, I can't necessarily come send it. Mm. And maybe um, I can add that uh, a significant portion of the settlement, as um, Eddie knows, is still in U.S. zones. Yeah. So um, maybe that's the elephant ah. in the room, right? I mean, we're <laughs> talking about, you know, about and RTGS and Rubo yeah. and all that, but the reality is an OTC settlement, yeah, so it's, it's still U.S. dollar DVD. Yeah, sold off. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed, Christian Pinetz. What, what, what are your main yeah, concerns? Uh, 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 the discussion with you, I still think we are facing the same problems as all of you. So it's all the, the, the department is to, to shift liquidity into the market and shift liquidity out to the market. So they have to pre-fund the cash accounts, one dollar buyout to the settlement date. That's a huge point for our clients is that uh, we can avoid how the summer can avoid that. Currently not. So they have to pre-fund them and if the settlement happens in the last batch, so they could not move the money out. So they have to stay with the money for maybe, in the worst case, an hour for three days. And that's, that's not, not a good solution, to be honest. Yeah, indeed, but I think you all agree that with a potential improvement huh, to the, <coughs> because the cost of liquidity is too high. I mean, I don't have a Russian banking license, and I probably need 50 billion rubles. Is my account operator in the room? <laughs> 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 and, and we, the the RTG system is a, is a very good system, but it, it's, it's not used to the extent. I mean, if it was used in a, at, a, at a higher rate, the, the Russian market would benefit from it. That is actually my point. Are there any more questions from the floor at this point? Any other panelists? I have a question for you. You referenced the geopolitical situation, and one of the challenges that face, confronts a lot of investors is simply knowing whether or not a given issuer is, or, or a given counterparty is or is not affected by the US. Oh. Perhaps we're not allowed to talk about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Simply whether or not that party is affected by US or EU measures. And that in itself causes a drag on people's appetite for the market. And I was really interested to hear about your references to global, uh, Golden Source. I mean, we, paradoxically, is that a way of reassuring investors, transparency wise? as to whether or not they're in compliance with their own obligations, and would you expect that that could consequently have a positive effect for the market recovery level? 
There's a question for you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about golden source, it's the source of corporate information. It doesn't matter sanctions or something else. It's only information about security is uh, coming up or last corporate uh, uh, events, uh, annual meetings, uh, are the voluntary uh, events and so on. That's why it doesn't, in our, in our view, it doesn't matter the sanctions and uh, compliance and so on. But of course we understand that NSD being the infrastructure should avoid any types of activity to which can be recognized as the uh, supporting some illegal uh, transactions, activity and so on. From this point of view, we try to, to cope with the, and we got good experience from our counterparts, I mean, real estate in Europe, what kind of transactions, payments and other trades may be recognized as the inefficient or illegal. And uh, we try to avoid or not to provide this, this type of activity. We understand that. Because we, it's it's a first experience for us in this situation, and we don't know what kind of uh, criteria can be used by the FARC or the U.S. authorities to say that NSD be, should be put into the list of of companies which are under sanctions. So we try to avoid any any uh, negative outcomes from. Our and to be absolutely transparent concerning our activity, I know, I know, I, I know that uh, our DVP settlement in US dollars, or IGP, or ICT, is uh, or were studied and accepted to be quite transparent and legal transactions. So, but it's, it makes sense, it's, it's a sensitive question for us. But Golden Souls, it simply means not, it's not, would you like to come back on that? I mean, I guess it's really my question was about investor confidence, that simply in terms of you know, inadvertently, for example, uh, investing in an indirectly owned subsidiary of somebody who has been designated. Mm -hmm. And the fear of doing that must, of course, affect investor preference. So the challenge for the market in general, it's not a specifically uh, Russian challenge, is simply to know what that web of shareholders is so that investors may apply their, their allocation decisions appropriately. Mm -hmm. So the, the question is the degree to which uh, that information can be made available to the market and whether that would have uh, an effect on investor preference for those securities that were not affected by the by the EU and US measures. I mean, uh, shareholders of NSD or uh, Russian companies? Of Russian companies. It may be a question for competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see answer first. <laughs> I was uh, going to. Um, Bring in uh, Bogdan at this point. I seem to be neglecting you at the end there. Do you, do you want to make any general comments about the. Uh, you want to give me the, the worst comment, right? <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing. Thank you, Amy. I'm not going to afford it. You're welcome. No, I mean, the decision of investing, it's, it's not up to any of us to uh, tell investors, hey guys, you come invest. It's you assess the risks and the benefits and everything as, as you always do. Uh, I mean, from what, like I said at the beginning, the market as it is now and all the work that is being behind, I'm, I'm not Russian, I'm Romanian, I'm... I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the work that has been behind all the changes in the market is, is tremendous. And if you look back two years ago, you will you, you see if you look at the roadmap and everything what happened, it didn't happen in five years, in six years, it happened it happened in, in two years, it happens very fast. Like Eddie says electronic voting. Up to last year, I remember, there was not even the discussion of electronic voting. 
and now it's a priority and it will be in place by, by April next year. I think this is, uh, I mean, this, this uh, rapidity of, of changing uh, is another sign for the investors to, uh, to look at the market. I mean, we computer share are not, are not, I mean, we are, we are a Russian entity, but we are part of, a, of an international group of companies. And we are still there. It's not, it's, we, are, we are still there, even though CSD at the beginning, uh, uh, we all thought that they would take part of, of, of the income. It didn't happen. I mean, if you are smart enough, you can, you can make up the losses. Okay. Did I answer, Eddie? Thank you. Which I did, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> For me, yes. Gentlemen, I have a question in the back there. Yeah, uh, Andrew Rand, uh, Deutsche Börse Group. Um, question regarding the bridge, uh, the Euroclear Clearstream bridge. Is the legal environment certain enough, sorry, is, is the legal environment certain enough to uh, uh, facilitate the, the, um, the bridge happening? And who was your question for specifically? Um, whoever wants to kill it, Eddie. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we should agree first and then give an answer. <laughs> yes, so, so, how about um, Philippe? We, we, there is no legal uh, obstacle to, to open the bridge between Europe and Eastern in Russia. Some practical things uh, have to be addressed with respect to um, Disclosure requirements, but that's only for instruments that are taxable, which means corporate bonds and equity. Uh, that is not the case for OZ and municipal bonds, which means that for OZ and municipal bonds you can actually open the bridge, and which means that you can open the bridge for equity and uh, corporate bonds as soon as you have an agreement with a practical operational agreement with VNSD how to organize disclosure for bridged non aligned positions. At least that is my view. Okay. Anybody else like to, um, to answer that one? Um, or, or but I may, I may, I may comment as well. <laughs> 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 this is the work to be done between, uh, between the, two, the two of us. I must say that uh, one, one additional element that we will need to be, to be, to be looked at, uh, uh, as Mark mentioned, there are a few operational procedures to be worked out between us, together with NSD. Uh, I think that the sanctions are uh, uh, bringing a new dimension to that, and it's something that we will have to, to look at uh, all, all together to see how we make sure that we do not pose any anyone uh, any difficulties. Uh, any, uh, Thank you. Any more questions from the floor? Um, in that case, perhaps we'd like to, uh, everybody would, would, would we like to uh, possibly give us a, a couple of summing up points, perhaps starting with you, Christian? Uh, yeah, short summary. I think we will stay in the Russian market. That's, that's a little bit sure. And we are happy to see uh, the developments that are coming, and hopefully we see successful projects running further on. And we are have a very good relationship with NST as well as our account operator. And hopefully we we'll see in the future more business for all of us. Thank you. Oleg um, Perestenko, the, um, uh, the name of the uh, session is Driving Infrastructure Changes. Perhaps you could give us your view of where the um, infrastructure changes will, um, will, will, will lead to next. Uh, well, I just mentioned in brief, in very brief, about our uh, mutual efforts in order to uh, implement DVP-1 as the first, as the first step in our uh, activity concerning uh, using uh, central bank money as an instrument in order to finalize uh, settlements in the securities market. Well, and just it's not just only it's not a final step. It's first step. I think it's just I think we'll go further. Uh, but it's um, not only a matter of uh, our activity and activity of NSD, but it's a matter of activity of our clients and commercial banks as well. And the Proactive attention concerning using our packages more, not only batched ones. Well, and speaking about infrastructure and driving infrastructure, just uh, have to mention that Bank of Russia not only uh, owner of the payment system, Bank of Russia is an overseer, referred to NSD, uh, as a secu central security depository and the payment system. 
And uh, if we come back to principle nine, just the uh, finality of payments uh, in financial market, uh, principle for financial market structures, there are two options there. Uh, final payments in central bank money, if possible, is it practicable and so on in, or just uh, final settlements in commercial net money with special attention concerning risk management. Now we are in just active position in both cases. We're trying to maybe to sort out some operational links uh, with NSD in order to um, fulfill, in order to implement central bank money as an instrument of analyzing and from other end. We are in a position as an overseer, how it's going on with risk management in real-time mode in SD as a systemically important payment system. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm going to give Eddie a stand in the last word, but just, uh, would you like a, a few words of summary um, <coughs> of those of you who have um, done so up to now? Perhaps, uh, Philippe? Uh, well, the, as a summary, I would like to, to thank NSD for, uh, for the, the support that we've had and uh, keep, uh, keep the pace. Uh, with uh, your partners, the, the Minister of Finance, uh, the Central Bank, in order to, to keep moving into the, the right direction to, to make sure that you give assurance to the international investors that the infrastructure is, is robust and safe. Mark Bosque? Yeah, I, I, exactly. And, and not to go into the detail here, but uh, one of the next points and probably the final point is to, to resolve the disclosure requirements. But at this time, I'm, I'm confident he's going to be, um, he's being addressed and will be resolved. We are very confident, but that's definitely the next step and probably the final step. Thank you. Christian Pinetz. Yeah, just as to add some, 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 some words more, I think, as uh, Mark already stated, I think the corporate action uh, reforms, they have to be on, uh, have to be coming to force as far as, yeah, as quick as possible. I think that we see more international clients moving into the market and we hopefully will see uh, more of them in the market, yeah. Thank you. Ideas started. I'll give you the last word. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we made a lot, and uh, I would like to express my appreciation for the international cooperation who share with us the experience, uh, the uh, time. I mean, uh, Europe, Europe, Stadium, Florida TV, and Global Custodians, who are the member of our international consulting committee, and set up some topics and uh, indicates, uh, indicate priorities for our changes in our economy. Now we have some time, we have money to, to improve our infrastructure, so I believe that the next, the next time we will see more developed and attractive infrastructure for the international community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Unless there are any more questions from the floor, I would like to thank all our panelists. Yeah, yeah, very, very well. well. And you? Yeah. 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 yeah.